It's 8 a.m. Pacific time, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for joining us for the April session of the RPS GlomCon Expert Webinar Series, and we're very excited to have Dr. Cynthia Nask here to talk to us about um, CKDU. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen. Okay, um, can you see my screen? Yes, no? Yes, it looks great. Okay, thanks. Um, so how do I get the pointer to work? Um, so thank you all for, uh, for coming uh, on this Sunday morning. I know it's early and I appreciate your uh, coming so I can share this um, with you. Ah, here we go, got it. So what is CKDU? It's a relatively recent epidemic, not really so recent, it's been around for a couple of decades now, of chronic kidney disease, which is not attributed to traditional factors, glomerular disorders, or other known causes of kidney disease. It does have regional clustering in endemic areas and is associated with uh, agricultural work for the most part. It has an insidious onset, probably starting in late childhood and um, often is asymptomatic with end stage kidney disease occurring at 40 to 60 years of age. And this is really a very serious problem uh, resulting in more than 30,000 deaths per year and severely impacts the endemic areas. So it was first uh, identified in Sri Lanka in 1994 and then Nicaragua in 1999, although it may have started in the 70s, that's not really clear from the literature. And we certainly have uh, identified it uh, more broadly since then. This is from 2017, um, and this is a map showing where the um, identified areas impacted with CKDU were then, and it has expanded even more in uh, 2022, with uh, more than 35 countries having evidence of CKDU. There's a uh, nomenclature, we're gonna call it CKDU, that's what most people refer to it as, chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology. There are some other terms that are etiology related, CNAC, chronic interstitial nephritis in agricultural communities, because this predominantly does impact people who work or live in agricultural communities. Also chronic kidney disease of non-traditional causes or multifactorial origin, et cetera. And originally it was geography related with Mesoamerican nephropathy in the Central American area, Nicaragua, El Salvador. Uh, and Sri Lankan nephropathy uh, actually was identified first and then Udanam nephropathy in India, but it's best to lump them all under CKDU, which is how we'll be talking about it uh, today. Clinical features uh, are in common in different geographic areas. It, it does impact younger age groups, uh, people in their 20s to 50s, predominantly men. It can be, it has been reported up to 70 years of age. And again, uh, agricultural workers or people who live in the agricultural areas and communities that are typically impoverished and underserved areas. So this hits hard in people who really can least um, afford to have this kind of medical problem because they usually don't have good access to health care. It is a tubular interstitial disease, uh, EGFR of less than 60, with no diabetes, hypertension, or glomerular disease as the primary cause. And again, this is um, quite different than CKD of um, whatever type that tends to impact older people with lots of underlying comorbidities like diabetes and hypertension. You may get these uh, disorders secondarily, but not as a primary cause of disease, and there's typically no or low-grade proteinuria. There may be variable systemic symptoms like arthralgias or muscle cramps or some artery abnormalities, but the kidney is the predominant infected, uh, affected organ. And this really is epidemic in endemic areas and is a public health crisis because these uh, impacted individuals can't work. They're a burden to their families, to society because there aren't resources to care for them. Um, and the families that are already poor become uh, very impoverished. 